I'd like to talk to you today about his brother Brian and bad sheep. Okay, that's enough. Um, <laughs> I've gotten a lot of people that are making these little weird things about, oh, you're breathing heavy, so you must be obese, and you must be in really bad shape or something. And it's very distracting to hear somebody breathing so hard. And, um, okay, first and foremost, I am not obese, okay? Um, I mean, I'm not, uh, you know, I don't have a gut or anything. I mean, you can see me in some videos. I don't, I'm not obese. Where that came from, I have no idea. Just, you know, some loser that doesn't have a life and they just want to try to irritate me. Well, congratulations, you did irritate me. Uh, not to make me stop, but uh, just to make me make fun of you. Um, it's ridiculous, you know. Talk about a lie and slander and the whole thing. Uh, yeah, I'm obese. Um, let me explain a couple of things, okay? And I'm going to tie this into the scriptures. So we'll get back to that here in a minute. But uh, when I'm climbing up a hill, okay, the, the most recent one where people got all offended was when we were at the ocean and I left the ocean, you know, the beach area there and I was climbing up this very steep hill up over rocks and everything else and I had my camera bag on. Well, the camera bag, when it's on, it's a, a Maxpedition Versa pack or something like that and it goes over my shoulder, down across my chest and then goes down around either on my left side here or I swing it around to the back. And it's got a lot of weight in it. Okay, I carry two cameras and other things, you know, a uh, seed dispenser and multiple magazines of seeds. Um, okay, if you understand the little implication there. And carrying that, all that weight is on my chest. Okay, so you're going up a hill, you kind of go, because it's a lot of weight there and it's, it's pulling on my chest. And not to mention the fact that right before I walked up the hill, we were on the beach there running around and things, seeing who could run fast through the, you know, the pebbles and things there. It's not really sand. But, um, you know, we were just having fun like that. But I was a little bit out of breath, and then I stopped, and, okay, I had to climb up this rock, and then I started going up the trail, and so I was a little bit winded. But if I was in such bad shape, I would have been having to stop and, oh, wait, I have to catch my breath. You know, that's not the case, right? I am in decent shape for somebody my age. Okay, you say, what age are you? Well, let me make a couple points here. Number one, I am 49 years old, all right? Um, so I think I have a right to be a little bit not in as good a shape as, a, as I was when I was a teenager, all right? But um, on that point, um, I don't think anybody out there is going to be able to do a walk and talk like this and never get out of breath if they're going up a steep hill. I mean, right now I'm walking on my property and it's just pretty much level. A little bit of up and down, but I'm not going to get winded walking like this, okay? So, um, but now here's where it gets into the spiritual, all right? Um, I work, I'm 49, so, you know, have some grace there for me. I'm an older man, but uh, I work in an office. Why do I work in an office? Because I get videos done teaching people the Word of God, uh, trying to get people to understand biblical salvation, New Testament salvation, what it means to be saved, how to go to heaven when you die. Uh, I have to make a sacrifice. Um, I worked in logging many years ago. I was a wood turner. I got into some wood carving. I was doing furniture making. Worked at a cabinet shop or two. I worked on a uh, at a Strasburg Railroad cooking on the on the historic uh, steam engine there and, and everything. They had a dining car and I would cook on that. I worked down at the dining car restaurant and I worked at other restaurants and, and things. I, I did a lot of that stuff. I started working on when I was 14 years old before I could even drive. So uh, yeah, I worked in the secular world for a long time before going into ministry, before the Lord, Lord saved me and then called me to go into ministry. Um, so. I do have a history of working at regular jobs, all right? Um, and unfortunately, during that time, I was not um, eating very healthy. I mean, for the first, basically, 36 years of my life, I was eating junk food. Lots of candy, lots of poison pop, the whole thing. So I have only really been into natural health now for a little over 10 years. Um, I mean, I, I ate some nutritious type of foods, but, uh, the real health that I've experienced 
has only been just a recent thing. And um, so that's another issue. You know, I'm not in the most perfect of health uh, because I can't be out here. Uh, I sacrificed my time to put videos out for people out there. And I thank you to everybody out there that supports the ministry, that actually learns from me and gets things from this video, or from this ministry, rather. And they say, um, I'm going to follow the scriptures. The scriptures say to support a man of God when he is going out and waging war against uh, the enemies of Jesus Christ and the enemies of the Word of God. And that's what I do. Um, you will never find another ministry like this. I don't care. I'm not trying to brag. I have to speak foolishly here for a minute. But you will never find another ministry like this that has such a low operating cost. And um, I don't have some big ch church building for you to help pay off or whatever else. Um, I don't have some big debt from my years of being in seminary or something like that. Uh, we live very simple. Eat two meals a day. High nutrient dense foods. But the whole point is I try to not be a burden on the body of Christ. Okay. I take it very seriously. I take my job very seriously. And part of that job is there's a lot of times I need to be out here on my property doing things, cutting firewood. And I always dreamed of building a log home. I don't know if I ever get to get that done on this property, but there's a lot of things I'd like to do. I'd like to be more involved with homesteading type of stuff, but you know what? There are people that have legitimate questions. There are people that they want to hear uh, truth from the scriptures. And they say, brother, do you have a study on whatever? And I think, no, I don't. What do I do? I need to start looking into that. It takes time. I also have a wife and a son, if you don't know that. And they take time. And even my dog. Uh, I saw him in the last video. I have to take time to do these things. But they're, I have to sacrifice myself and my desires and my wishes. There's a big part of me that would just like to go back to the art world again where I used to be and go back into wood turning and wood carving and add you know, different things into it. I really miss that. I miss the creat creativity of, you know, being in my art studio and, and working on things and making beautiful products and, and going to the art galleries and art shows and things and having people come up and, you know, say, hey, you do really good work and I'd like to have your work in our gallery or whatever else. I mean, I'm, I went from that, you know, literally museums and very wealthy people uh, praising me for my work go from that to doing videos where people are, you know, saying all manner of evil things about me and casting out my name as evil and just making fun of me and trying to destroy me and my family and lying about me and whole websites just dedicated to destroying me and my character and whatever. You know, <laughs> think about that, okay? You people think about that out there. Look at the comments section. Look at the, just type my name in in a Google search and see what happens. I mean, Going from being a, a man that's being praised by people to now being hated by people. Um, so can I be in the most perfect shape doing that? Uh, I've seen people and they say, oh, something's wrong with his eyes. His eyes don't look quite right or something. Yeah, it's called my eyesight is, is leaving me. I'm losing my eyesight. Um, you know, the Apostle Paul wrote about that. That uh, the people, you know, if it'd be possible that they would pluck out their own eyes and give them to Paul. Yeah, that's one of the, the side effects to studying the scriptures a lot. You know, uh, King Solomon wrote back in the book of Ecclesiastes about much study is a weariness to the flesh. Uh, it, it will wear you out. Then there's all the spiritual attack stuff that comes as well. Um, if you want to go into ministry, you need to think about these things. Uh, there's a lot of good jobs that you can get out there and... and um, have a pretty enjoyable life and work hard and have a wife and children and all the great things. And that's great. That's wonderful. Praise the Lord. But if the Lord puts a calling upon your life to, and he says, I want you to go into ministry. Oh boy, get ready. It is not an easy thing. Um, another thing, um, why I'm not in, in the very, you know, best shape or something, I guess, you know, I should have uh, ripped abs or something, six pack abs or whatever. Why? Uh, what good would that do me? Oh, uh, going to go around without a shirt on or something? No. Um, I'm supposed to stay covered up. 
The Bible speaks about women are to adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety. But um, the Bible doesn't say the same thing of men, but you can infer it. Um, if a woman can cause a man to lust, well, a man can cause women to lust as well. I'm out doing chores or something in front of the ministry office and I don't have a shirt on or something, I could cause women to lust. Why would I want to do that? Not exactly the uh, a proper thing for a preacher to be either. Oh, that preacher, he sure is ripped. You know, look at him, man. He's, you know, does bodybuilding and whatever else. And <laughs> Weird. Um, you say, well, you should at least go to the gym, Brother Brian. Get yourself in better shape. Um, well, that's a problem. Um, I've actually only been in a gym one time in my entire life. Uh, my older brother, Dean, he used to uh, have a screen printing business when he got out of high school. And he made the t-shirts for Gold's Gym. If you can remember the old Gold Gym, you know, little guy with the, maybe you've never seen it, but little guy would have the barbell and the barbell's bent, you know, and whatever, muscle, you know, roid head, you know, and things. My brother used to print those, you know, it'd say Gold's Gym underneath. And he would print those t-shirts, and I helped him deliver the t-shirts to a gym. And that is honestly the only time I've set foot in a gym. Never again. Uh wasn't a bad experience, but I just, I don't care to ever go to a gym. I think it's, you know, stupid to be very honest with you. The other issue is here where I live, uh, there are no gyms. Okay. <laughs> um, I think that there might be one in the uh, town of Presque, Presque Isle, which is about an hour to the north uh, east of us here. Um, so, uh, brother, you need to get to a gym and exercise at least, you know, a couple times a week. Well, there aren't any. Um, people around here, uh, my neighbors and things like that, um, we're not really concerned about gyms. We don't really sit around looking for ways to get in shape. We work. It's a hard life. Um, city people don't understand that, I guess. You just kind of think to yourself, well, you know, you have to go and get any little spandex stuff and whatever else and lift your weights and whatever. And, um, not when you live out here, you don't. Uh, I can go hiking, I can split firewood, I can, there's a lot of things I do to stay in good shape. I mean, we have no running water here, which means I have to haul all water that we use um, by hand. So, you know, carrying around 70 pound water jugs and the water sloshes around, which makes it kind of challenging to carry it. Um, so 140 pounds. He says, I can bench press whatever. I'm impressed, really impressed. You know, these guys, oh, I could bench press 400 pounds or something. And what practical application is there in real life for that? Uh, can you split a quart of firewood in, in a day? I haven't done that in a long time, but I used to be able to do that. Split a whole quart of firewood. A pile that's four feet high, four feet wide to eight feet long is a cord. Three different rows of wood, 16 inch long firewood. Used to be able to do that cord of firewood a day when I was selling firewood many years ago. Um, never went to a gym. So uh, this whole thing of are you in shape or whatever else, uh, understand that there's different ways of being in shape. Okay. And so I'm sorry if I'm not the most perfectly physically fit guy that's ever existed or something. I don't have you know, I can't walk up hills without breathing heavily or something. Uh, so, but uh, just the kind of stuff, the kind of attacks that come upon you, you know, when you get into ministry. Um, if you hang around this ministry and you look at the comment section and things, you'll see this stuff from people. They'll come up with some of the nastiest, meanest things that you can imagine. And um, that's just the way it is. I'm going to go to the scriptures now to the book of 1st Timothy. I'm going to show you another thing uh, to show that I'm right in what I'm doing. My justification. It's just part of the, the way things are. Here, let me explain. 1st Timothy chapter 4 verses uh, 7 through 9. Let me get this little bookmark out of here. I've got the sun coming up behind me. But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth 
little. But godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. Bodily exercise profiteth little, brethren. Um, if I went with what my flesh really wanted, uh, you wouldn't see me. I would be out here. I would be doing things. I just, I, you know, I walk around my property and I think, okay, that this uh, timber stand here needs to be thinned out. There's a lot of small stuff you can see back through here. Um, you can see where I thinned it out over there. The trees are a lot bigger than they are in, in this area over here. Wherever I thin them out, the trees say, okay, there's you know, more nutrients and things for them and they grow bigger. Uh, my whole property needs some serious thinning like that. And that makes my trees get bigger, which means someday when I log again, well, not again, but someday when I log, um, because it, it was logged before I bought it. But if I log the property in the future, that means I'd make some pretty decent money with bigger trees. But the trees don't get big if you're not here to take care of those trees. And so a lot of this timber standing through here, I should be, um, I studied forestry years ago and, um, and I know how to take care of a woodlot and I should be doing a better job at my property. But it's more needful for me to be here on the internet teaching the word of God to people. And um, you know, I just have to say something that really breaks my heart and that is that there aren't more preachers out there that I can recommend. Look at this timber stand, it's terrible. You know, there's a six by six rule that should, about every six feet is where a tree should be, you know, in forestry. And they, I won't get into all the details on it, but you know, six feet apart, you can see a lot of these trees are so skinny because they're so close to each other. And uh, kind of a, a picture of the church right now, the, the body of Christ. Um, Christianity, we'll say. Uh, there's a lot of um, a lot of people in there that are very anemic and very sick, and they don't know the Word of God. They don't understand the Scriptures, and it needs to be thinned out. You know, separating the wheat and the tares, as the Bible talks about. But um, if you're going to serve the Lord, you're going to have to make some serious sacrifices, and part of that will be your health. Um, I try my very best to eat good nutrition so that I can um, maintain my eyesight and other things. And little apples right there, getting ready for harvest. They're small, but they do taste good. And again, natural health, um, very important. But um, I try my best to, to stay in good health. I try my best to stay in good shape. And uh, it's not always easy. And, you know, it's kind of a thing that we have gone over many times in a, as a family. You know, that line between working too much and not working enough. Right now I have several studies that are all written up, ready to go. And I need to get to the office and I need to get these studies done. And... You know, it's very important for me to do that. And I can't. Right now, uh, there's a bunch of other things I need to do. Um, we had a delivery that was supposed to be coming early morning on Monday. And we were going to get the delivery and then we were going to go do our shopping that we needed to do, some food shopping. And, uh, and we waited all day and the guy finally showed up at, after 3 o'clock. And... Um, so we couldn't do our shopping. So then yesterday we had to do our shopping. So that was two days away from the ministry that I couldn't do a whole lot of stuff. And I was, you know, I did do some things, of course. I brought out some videos and whatever. But, um, hearing some noises over there in the woods. But, uh, so not sure what that is over there. But, um, Probably my son, unless it's a moose, then I'm going to have to adjust its attitude if it comes at me. They're not like that. Though. They're not really that dangerous. You just yell or whatever and they take off. But anyhow, just to finish up the video here, um, there are sacrifices that have to be made. And so 
uh, if I'm not in the most perfect shape or whatever else, well, <laughs> sorry about that. You know, I'm sorry people get offended at me breathing heavy when I'm walking up a hill, carrying a camera, carrying a camera bag, and, you know, I get out of breath a little bit. And, of course, you know, all the people that uh, say I'm in bad shape, uh, I look at their channels and they have no content. So, go figure. But uh, that should be it. And I um, have one other video I need to do here, and then we're heading to the office, and then I'll get to work on some other things. But um, just as a little precaution out there, if you think that ministry is an easy thing, you're a young man and you want to get into ministry, um, you'll find out. It is not an easy uh, life at all. So, all right, that will be it. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching.